Duke ain't supposed to beat Miami in football. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> On today's Throwdown Thursday edition of the Odd Coaches Podcast, Dr. Adams and Coach Francis recap week eight games. Coach Francis gives advice to Power Five football coaches, review Dr. Adams strictly for entertainment purposes only picks, as well as previewing week nine of the college football season. Welcome to today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA Save Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at cka.saveproject.org. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coast Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with me today is my tag team partner. Uh, I am going back to 2011 uh, this year, the Dolph Ziggler to my Jack Swagger in the WWE, the icon the showstopper, the main event, and the reason why we are here, Coach Mike Francis and Coach. How are you? And yes, I am trying to get better with these lights. And what's going on, sir? I'm all right. How you doing? Man, I'm doing fine, but I'm hot because all these, I got a middle screen, I got a middle light, I got two sides, and eventually, as you saw uh, when you visited, we're going to have some shelving in the back and, and all kinds of fun stuff. So. I love that. I love your <laughs> lights, too. <laughs> we'll get you some, too. I don't yeah. know. We're going we're gonna to figure it out. Uh, but on today's Throwdown Thursday edition, we are going to review week eight of the college football season as people are starting to make some moves and maneuvers preview week nine and in segment two uh i got some surprises for my partner because he gets to uh be either coach franchise or the administrator uh with some things that are coming up but let's go around the territory starting with the atlantic coast conference mike four quick things about the acc one Mm -hmm. clemson's not elite two syracuse blew a chance to be extra relevant Three, Wake Forest may be sneaky good. And four, strictly for entertainment purposes only, Duke ain't supposed to beat Miami in football. Why not? (laughs) (laughs) Any thoughts about this week in the ACC? No, I thought of uh, uh, first uh, Syracuse. Man, Syracuse had a great showing, a great showing. Uh, I was very, very happy for Syracuse. They didn't win, is what my partner would say. They didn't, but I'm telling you, no <laughs> one expected them to go in the Death Valley and do that. So, uh-huh. really uh-huh. good. All right, and we'll uh, talk more about Clemson in segment two. But we're going to move to the American. And Cincinnati and Tulane are both 6-1 and one and both in the top 25 in the nation. So, fans, for things strictly entertainment purposes only, when you see those bowl matchups, don't just skip over those two teams. I'm telling you. Don't just skip over them. Keep an eye on both. Mike hates the Americans, so we're going to move on <laughs> to the Big 12. No, no. The Big 12. TCU hangs on for another week. Mike, they have a shot to stay undefeated, but it will not be easy. That's not but good. I thought Kansas State was going to do it. They were up. TCU came back. Uh, but again, they're still relevant. They might be six in the nation by the time this comes out, and that puts them in shouting distance of super relevancy. Uh, thank you, Oklahoma State, for beating Texas, strictly for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, we got to get that out of the way. And Kansas finally remembered that, hey, psst, you know you're Kansas, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing with it? <laughs> My bad. That's on me. That's what... Damn. Come on, man. <laughs> Any thoughts on the Big 12, Mike? You said Kansas. Remember, they was Kansas. No, you Kansas, right? Hey, what are you doing? Stop, oh, Stop. Sorry, and they apologize, too. Hey, sorry. <laughs> Anything on the Big 12, sir? No, no, no. This is uh, maybe Gary? the third, third best conference, so. <laughs> third? Yeah. You better keep going back there. Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> well, <go ahead. laughs> All right. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Big 10. 
So Ohio State and Michigan are on a collision course, but Illinois stands in Michigan's way because I don't think anybody's going to beat Ohio State because Penn State plays them next week. We'll talk about that in segment three. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes. yeah, and uh, congratulations to Maryland. They are six and two and bowl eligible. Maybe they can get a good bowl. Back to back think? years. Back to back years. That's what I'm talking about. Coach yeah. Locks getting it done. Getting it done. I'm glad to hear, him, man. Let's, and, let's go. Let's and go. And special shout out to Gerald Smoke Dixon, uh, Pate Branch class of, I believe, 99, who was inducted into the Pate Branch Athletic Hall of Fame. It was good to see Gerald. I have not seen Gerald in many a moon. And uh, to have him as head of recruiting at Maryland and so local, um, you know, that's always good to see a local guy done well. All right, HBCU. So, Mike, I told you I was going to watch Jackson State and Campbell. So, Jackson State beat Campbell 22 to 14. Mm-hmm. Campbell <clears throat> is kind of a middle of the road FBS team. Shadur Sanders was 23 for 31, 233 and a touchdown. Um, what, if anything, do you think this says? And they did. Uh, Campbell came to, to, to Mississippi to play. Any thoughts on the score and just Shadur Sanders' numbers against a uh, middle of the pack, you know, kind of FBST? No, I don't know. Uh, uh, it's a middle of the pack team, but I think it's just the first time they step out to where mm-hmm. people can see them. Um, and they can measure themselves of where they are. Plus, this yeah. is a good. This is more importantly a good move for our, for the recruit. I say our. I'm sorry, for the recruits, for Dion as well, for the kids he's bringing in to show them that they can put them in the game like that. that. And matter of fact, uh, ESPN was pimping Dion this weekend because they had their game on ESPN Plus, which you had to buy a subscription to see. So, you know, we talk about it being education and all that, and even mm-hmm. ESPN then jumped on the Jackson State bandwagon. Yeah, uh, I do have to see his 60 Minutes interview in its entirety. I saw some snippets of that, and uh, it was quite compelling, actually. Uh, So between that and Mike Tomlin's interview on The Pivot this past summer, uh, if you're interested in the coaching aspect of it and and getting some PD, some professional development, uh, I encourage you guys to listen to that. But Howard won their homecoming game, and they are 1-0 in the MEAC, so a kill. Let's let, let's get this thing going there, Bison. And North Carolina Central lost to South Carolina State, and uh, that 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 was a bit of an upset. So a little bit of HBCU there, as we do every week. Mm-hmm. Group of five. So again, this is an early bull watch. This is why we use Group of Five because it's strictly for entertainment purposes only. But if you see University of Texas San Antonio, mm-hmm. Boise State, or Troy in the bowl against a middle of the road. Power five team, don't just dismiss them. Keep an eye on them. And uh, I do want to personally uh, say, hey, JMU, uh, you dropped two straight losing to Marshall. We'll see you uh, next season, buddy. (laughs) We'll see you next season. We're done with you. Sorry about that, man. I tried. But you can't lose two straight and think you're going to be with Anyway, uh, any thoughts about the group of five, sir? No, nah, um, like you said, it's starting to pan out now. It's starting to pan out. Who's going to be where? And unfortunately, the group of five is is it's not too many in there that's yeah. going to be. Yeah. So I'm looking straight at bowls now for the rest of the season with group of five because I'm trying to, you know, I'm going to be in Vegas uh, around Thanksgiving time. So I want to keep an eye on that. Uh, Independence. So Notre Dame is four and three right now. But Mike, I'm going to pause because here are the, the rest of the games that they have to finish the season. Syracuse next week. Clemson, Navy, Boston College, and USC. Those are their five remaining games. How do you think they're going to do? Navy, I'm sorry, Syracuse, Clemson, Navy, BC, USC to finish the season. Mm. Yes. Maybe, maybe Boston College. They're going to beat Navy too. But then again, I said that uh, I, have, I have been bitten. <laughs> Does he make it through? And I need, hey, Jake, I'm going to call you purpose. this week. <laughs> Jake, I, I look for a text or something because mm-hmm. I do need your help with this one. 
All right. So Ooh. Liberty blasted BYU 41-14, and they're 7-1 and one on the season. And Liberty may sneak into the top 25. And, Mike, they play Arkansas November 5th. Hugh Freeze is an SEC coach. Do you think they get the upset on Arkansas, which really would be like a game changer for Liberty? Uh, <laughs> so they have a bye this week, and then they go play Arkansas. I, I, I don't. They're not going to beat Arkansas. Let's just be. They're not going to beat Arkansas. So then, what do you do when you're six and two or seven and two? Uh, you you go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl and you you keep it. Okay. Okay. Right. They're, they're not going to beat Arkansas. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It's not, not gonna happen. <laughs> okay, I got got a little too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you got a little too liberty. <laughs> <laughs> so the Pac-12, and then there were none. UCLA was the last chance for the Pac-12 to have a clear path to the CFP. Now, man, they're gonna try to push Oregon down our throat. Okay, they they are. You you're gonna see this over the next few weeks. Oregon, now uh, the only loss they had was the first one, and that team is not this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, Georgia, they're the number one team yeah. in the country, so they need to be in the four. That's, yes. that's what they're gonna push. It's not gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm I'm telling you this in advance. So as you're listening to this, wow. Dr. Adams, no, it's not gonna happen. It's just for TV. Uh the Pac the Pac twelve uh moves just for fun category for us. Yeah, because but if if Come on. If they run the table, they shouldn't be in the four. No, not at all. Not, e not even close. Look, uh, and you know, I hate, I, I, there's nothing I hate worse than West Coast sports. So, so <laughs> I, did, I didn't go that far, fam. Okay, but I mean, whack and pack and all that, I don't do none of that. But if they go under, they go to, they they went out, mm -hmm. had one loss to Georgia, they yes. deserve to be in the four. Segment three fans, uh, we're going to show my partner why he's wrong when we put the real data out there. And speaking of the real data, the SEC, damn, 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 Ole Miss got smoked by LSU. I'm hoping Lane could stay relevant, stay relevant. Nah, man, LSU beat them. So is there something to this Brian Kelly thing because they're actually playing better? Uh, any thoughts uh, on that? Is LSU actually better? Um, I think so. The way they're playing now, they are. <laughs> I think they they finally got it together. I think that you know it just took a while to knock the kinks out and get down to who they are, and they seem to be getting the ball to their to their. Uh, they seem to be in the rhythm of getting the ball to to their top players. So All right. it is LSU at the end of the day, no matter who the head coach. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, it's the SEC. Kids are going to come. Fake accent or no fake accent. They're going to play us down in the bayou. You know how we say, don't mess it up and get out the way. Yeah, just get out the yeah. way. <laughs> All right. So UT, University of Tennessee, has Kentucky and Georgia over the next two games. So this could either be the transitioning of power and Josh Heupel uh, is, is going to be national coach of the year, or uh, yeah, it's going to be over, and uh, that win means nothing. So, do they have a shot to beat Kentucky and Georgia over the next two games? Are they going to go two and two and zero, oh, one and one, or zero oh and two? One and one, maybe. One All one. right. I, I I don't want to go against the Stoops, man. That guy can coach. Man. He can. <laughs> that right. guy can coach, and he'll sneak a win. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, in 1991, Chuck D was mad, okay? And uh, Flavor Flav said on, on, on the song, y'all got Chuck mad now, and he wrote Welcome to the Terror Dome, where he just ripped like, like the world and like, Five minutes and 20 seconds. Y'all done got Nick mad now. Nick Saban seems to be mad. They beat Mississippi State 30 to 6. And here's who they got coming up LSU and Ole Miss. So I told you last week that there's a clear path for Alabama to get into the CFP if they go to take, run the table and beat Georgia in the championship. Again, we already put Georgia in the championship. There's no way they're going to leave them out. Okay. <laughs> 
which means there's no way they're going to leave Georgia out losing the SEC championship, and that's two. So then you got – anyway, I'll, we'll worry about that segment three. Uh, and Georgia was idle this week. So, uh, Mike, any last thoughts on the SEC before we close out this opening segment? Uh, the SEC, best conference in football, we know that hands down. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how it develops, you know, with, with Alabama with one loss and everyone else playing the way they are. It's going to be very interesting. All right, so fans, uh, segment two, you're going to enjoy this because there's some problems out there, and uh, our part, my partner is going to help uh, major teams solve their issues, and we'll be right back on the I Coaches podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book. So I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams, just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at CKA at CKASaveProject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two. I don't know if we're going to call it a segment or not or, or title it, but Mike, what would you do? Here's the first case. <clears throat> you are Nick Saban at Alabama. Mm-hmm. Nick Saban said he had reason not to suspend wide receiver Jermaine Burton from Saturday's game against Mississippi State after video surfaced that appeared to show Burton strike a woman who stormed the field when Tennessee beat Alabama last week. Uh, Nick Saban said, I didn't think it was necessary to suspend the guy. If you knew the whole story, maybe you wouldn't either, but I'm not going to divulge that. Look, I don't know how many of you have been in a situation like that, but I talked to him and he was scared. I was scared. Some of the other players were scared. What you didn't know, if you didn't see it, fans, was that after the win, Tennessee stormed the field. Yes. Or they in the goalpost. Yes. And quite frankly, the players took it, took it to the river. Well, well, they did take it to the river. Uh, take me to the river. <laughs> um, so, hey, man, what would you do? Would you have suspended him or played him like Nick did? Uh, eesh. That's tough. He said he was scared. And it, well, uh, how did he know it was a woman? How did he know? You know what I mean? Like you in that situation, it gets crazy. They was dimming the lights, flash, everything was going crazy. You don't know who was who. Can't nobody just touch you. You don't know. I, uh, I my son's sophomore year at Maryland, some woman spit on him. So you know, from up above, and we couldn't get to her. So <laughs> trust me. Oh. But, but yeah, we had we left West Virginia with a nice little escort to the car, but. uh <laughs> so you would have played them. Uh, I would have to, and uh, not knowing what's going on, if I don't have all the details or whatever, and then she could have been making it up. You know how it is. Do you have uh, video? I did not see the video. I didn't but either. hey, uh, if Saban said no, okay, Saban mm-hmm. said no. Mike would have played him too. So. I would have played. Him. Plus, with Nick, that could have been a way to get back in Tennessee too. Like you don't understand, <laughs> like. <laughs> All right. So case number two, you are Clemson's coach, Dabo Sweeney. Dabo made a change of quarterback that helped spark. Stop it. (laughs) We're doing a second. We got a show. We got a show. We got a show. All right. Okay. 
<laughs> Clemson's coach Dabo Sweeney made a change at quarterback that helped spark a 27 to 21 come from behind win against Syracuse. But afterwards, he insisted that DJ Uluwagale remains the Clemson starting quarterback. So, Mike, I'm going to set this up for you and set it up for our audience. Clemson was down 21 to 10 midway through the third quarter. And uh, DJ threw his second interception of the day, his third turnover overall, but Syracuse was unable to turn it into points. And then Sweeney turned to true freshman Cade Kublik in hopes of igniting Clemson's struggling offense. He said after the game that DJ's our starter, DJ's our leader. Ain't nothing changed with that. He had one of them days. He missed a few plays, but he earned being the starter. He's got to clean up do a few things, but he will. And he invokes Steph Curry going two for 25 or something like that. So, Mike, what are you doing if you're Dabo? Because this kid has been up and down and has, quite frankly, underperformed. How are you handling it? Um, You know, trying to save the kid's confidence, the first thing he said was, he's our guy, you know, Stephen Curry. Now, first of all, I do this – with protests. You're telling me to be Dabo Sweeney. So I want everybody to know <laughs> there's nothing in the world I want. You could ask me to be anybody but him, but I'm going to do it, okay? Um, but, you know, he tried to come, you know, he's trying to help with the kid's confidence and understand. But I'm going to tell you that there's no way that kid can't. I mean, if you give him another start and he does the same, I put the other kid back in and then he won't see the field again. Okay, that's okay. You know what so, I mean? Like, I, who are we playing next week? I do not know, and point five is upstairs. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, we playing somebody, I mean, this week they played, it was tough for them, but playing Syracuse and for that freshman to come in, true freshman, to come in and do what he did against Syracuse, it's hard for me not to, 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 to be ready to put him back in. Like, first time dude throw an incompletion, I might get him out. <laughs> so Clemson plays Notre Dame next, and this is a bye week. So maybe okay. this is a good time to uh say, so, hey, split the reps. Yep. Put the pressure on the young fella. Split the reps in practice. That's what you do. Okay. So Clemson goes uh Notre they Dame, Louisville, <laughs> Miami, and South Carolina. Those are the last four. So they ain't playing nobody in two weeks. <laughs> You I, I, I can't argue, man. I'm a Notre Dame fan. I, I can't argue, that, right? Should I? <laughs> you can't. There's nothing to argue when you're four and three. So, all right. So, case three. You are Texas A&M's administration. The Gamecocks of South Carolina return the opening kickoff for a touchdown, turn a fumble and an interception into ten more points, and South Carolina. Got the win over Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. And uh, in segment three, strictly for entertainment purposes only, you will see why that's a good thing for me. But, hey, you open the season ranked six. Mm. You're paying this guy $9 million to lose season. And he is three and four right now to and lose. one and three in the SEC. Uh you are struggling right now to just get the six wins to be bowl eligible. You got UMass coming up, <laughs> and you also have Ole Miss, Florida, Alabama, and LSU. That's how you're finishing your season. How are you dealing with this, Mike? Uh, we got to have a conversation. That's what we got to do. We got to find out where we, where does it, how do you start out number six and then end up you know, losing the South Carolina at home. And, uh, you know, historically speaking, uh, in the SEC, losing to South Carolina has been bad for SEC coaches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil yeah, yeah, yeah. Former, yeah, yeah, 2008, yeah, yeah. Will Muschamp, yeah, yeah. 2014, and That's, Dan Mullen, usually, 2021, all got the hook after losing usually, to South Carolina. You usually get two plane tickets after that one. <laughs> you usually get two plane tickets after that. Yeah, you and your wife go, uh, go on vacation. We're going to name yeah. homeboy the interim coach. And, and until you get a job, we'll pay your salary. That you like Herm Edwards get fired in the end. So. Yeah. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. No, it happens. You know oh. it. <laughs> I don't even know why they let him get that far. <laughs> I would have went into the booth. 
problems with AD, grabbed the headsets from one of the assistants upstairs and said, Walk hey, left. Hey, don't walk right. <laughs> hey, don't go back to the locker room. <laughs> so, does Jimbo come back next year? Because I did tell you you're paying him $9 million a year. It's not like the oil people they got the money. I mean, I, I can't even say that. They, yeah, they well, find I mean, money down there. I was going to say, I'm, if the alumni is willing to pony up the money, I got to get rid of them. I got to do whatever alumni say. If they, they pony up the money, you got you know how it is. All whoever, right. Whoever putting the money up, that's where he go. So to end this segment, uh, and we're going to do this now every week because what we're trying to do, fans, in terms of our husband watch is – predict the people who will actually get invited to New York. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so right now, if, you, if if we're looking at it, Ohio State's quarterback, C.J. Stroud, has an inside chance to get to New York. And he has an inside chance to win it because Ohio State's going to be on national TV the rest of the season. They're undefeated. And then if they go undefeated and he plays well against Michigan, that's going to be hard to not give it to him. Tennessee's quarterback, Herndon Hooker, has some prime opportunities. If they go 2-0 and against these next two opponents that they have, it's going to be hard not to talk about this kid. Mm. Uh, it's going to be hard because mm -hmm. that's Kentucky and that's, more importantly, Georgia. Uh, USC's quarterback, Caleb Williams. USC has one loss, um, mm. and they have some profile games. If they can stay as a one-loss team, you know, and then they, they beat Oregon in the Pac-12 championship or however they do it. And fans, no, I haven't even looked at how the Pac-12 does the championship. I have no interest. Uh, Michigan's running back has an opportunity because they're undefeated. They're going to get that ball to that boy 25-30. Easy. Easy. <laughs> give to and I've got a uh, wild card that my partner will definitely agree with. Oregon quarterback Bo Nix. Mm -hmm. If Oregon, yes, sir, runs this the rest of the way, yes, sir, and they're doing it with him, he the one doing it. How you gonna argue that he shouldn't be invited to New York? I'm not saying he's gonna win, but we're inviting people to New York City, and I think they invite five, so that's why I'm gonna stay at five uh, every week, guys. Point five just rolled in. Shout out to point five. Um, what do you think about that five? Is there anybody I should add? Uh, the kid in Tennessee, is he at five? Kid, kid in Tennessee's there, and he's got two prime slots, Kentucky and Georgia. If they beat Kentucky and go into that Georgia game, mm -hmm. maybe even rank two over mm -hmm. Ohio State, mm -hmm. man, that's some historic one and two, mm -hmm. eyeballs, cameras, everything um, with that. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep an eye on that. and That's the best. I, Kind of wish good. they beat Kentucky just so we could have the atmosphere. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. I, I said just so we could have the atmosphere. If you've got a one versus two or one versus three in college football in November. Oh, yeah, we can book that. We're going to pack the uh, green Yeah, yeah we're going to watch that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and we're going to get everybody yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and more yeah. importantly, strictly for entertainment purposes only, <laughs> we're going to get some good lines and all of that. How deep so, in November is it? <laughs> it's uh, three weeks from now. Okay, yeah. Three yeah, weeks yeah. from now. So. Oh, so we won't be able to do it for entertainment purposes on our Man, her no, anyway, we'll be right back on the Eye Coaches Podcast. <laughs> there is an old business adage that says, what gets measured and monitored gets done. It is also fact that deadlines for action. That is what the CKA Save Project's academic monitoring service can do for student athletes. Measure and monitor their academic progress to improve their grades. Our academic monitoring services provide ongoing academic support for student athletes for a designated period of time. Our academic success coaches work with student athletes on time management and organizational skills, along with improving their ability to self-advocate. Every few weeks, our academic success coaches meet with student athletes to assess their academic progress, as well as provide ongoing academic advising. If needed, student athletes have access to CKA Learning Specialists who provide virtual core subject academic support for student athletes. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free virtual consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at ckasaveproject.org.
Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast. In segment three, we will talk about things strictly for entertainment purposes only, but we would like to revisit segment two. <laughs> Both my partner and I saw the video oh with God. Alabama and uh, Tennessee. And uh, Mike, uh, would you like to recant your statement? Yes, that dude need a suspension, man. You can't do that, man. That little girl wasn't. Ah, she scared him. <laughs> Come yes. on, man. Uh, he ain't scared at all. I, uh, I definitely uh, concur. Uh, that's not good, man. You can't do that. And, uh, I, I don't think this is going to go away for for uh, a while. Uh, some somebody might uh, have to revisit that one. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Uh, we're going to go OCP top five. Uh, so right now, uh, I have Georgia at one, mm-hmm. Ohio State at two, Tennessee at three, Michigan at four, and Clemson dropped to five. And if TCU looked better, I'd have made Clemson six. Okay. Uh, on the outside looking in, I now have TCU because they're still there. And Alabama's now officially hanging around because they've got a clear path. No Pac-12 teams. So, Mike, where are we going to fit the Pac-12? Where are we going to fit them? If TCU goes undefeated, if they do, no, what's going to happen? They're not going to go undefeated. So TCU. now, okay, let's say TCU has one loss. So now yeah. the Big 12's out. Yeah. <laughs> and the Pac-12's out because you're going to have No, nah, Oregon, Oregon got to go, man. You're going to have two SEC uh, teams. Oregon got to be. If Georgia and Alabama play in the championship, uh, Alabama beats Georgia, Georgia has one loss. You're not leaving out a one-loss Georgia team. Or so one loss Alabama right team. Yep, so that's two right there. They before mm-hmm. yeah, Ohio State or Michigan's going to be in there. So then both, out of all of the crap I think both. left. Why not have two, two Big Ten and two SEC teams? I don't think they'll do that. But Why not? Notice, you're still not putting in a Pac-12 team, though. At the end of the day, because we still didn't even mention Clemson. We missed out on on, on, on the ACC. If Clemson uh, goes undefeated, they're Applesauce. in there. <laughs> Applesauce. <laughs> Applesauce out. <laughs> so I don't see any scenario. I'm going with the two SEC and the two Big Ten teams. No, it's, I, I think right now it's going to be Georgia, Ohio State, um, Alabama, and Clemson. And Clemson's bad. But the ACC, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, who they're playing. And Syracuse, yeah, yeah, yeah. S.D. Jones, uh, two drop kicks, went for the third, missed. That's pretty much what happened with Syracuse. They had me thinking that they can win. Mr. T going to beat you. (laughs) He held the ropes on the third one, dropped the big elbow. Stop. All right. They're more like the Haiti kid. Mr. T going to beat you. Stop that. <laughs> All right. So, picks of the week. Last week, I was 0 5, sir. This week, I was 2 and 3. Uh, here are my picks. I had Oklahoma State uh, on the spread plus six uh, against Texas. So, I won that one. And on the spread over the season, fans, I'm 4 and 3. That's where I want to be. Uh, but I want to be that overall. Over under, uh, Pitt and Louisville decided to play defense this week. Um, you take the over. Uh, no, I took the over because no one plays defense right now. So I'm three and four in my over under picks. What if both offenses are just bad? And that's why it's called gambling. My two play of the week was Clemson and Miami. Miami doesn't lose the Duke in football. Okay. Hey, until, yes, they do. Yes, until. they apparently they do. So I'm two and five with my two plays. Okay, my three play of the week, Baylor, Alabama, and Maryland. I was a three play, all three won. I'm three and four with three play. And then my money line play of the week, Ole Miss was the underdog, and they were seventh in the nation against LSU. I Mm -hmm. said, man, my partner loves Lane. This could be his time. Mm -hmm. And egg laid badly. So I am two and five with my upset picks. <laughs> I'm 16 and 24 overall. I'm down 95. And my wife still doesn't care because she said, look, Keith, it's week eight. 
you're down 11 bucks a week. You're usually spending 11 bucks a week at fast food. So I was going to say, I'm that's one trip. Been there doing. Yeah. That's one trip to Dunkin' Donuts. You know? <laughs> so anyway, look for our picks every Saturday morning. Um, but I am having fun with this. So the season-long win totals, Alabama's not winning 11 and a half, so I have to own that. Georgia still has a chance. They're at seven wins. Uh, Houston over nine and a half is not going to make it. Kansas, we're going to make fun of you the rest of the year because I've already won. NC State, they got five wins. I got them over eight and a half. Not going to I need four more wins from NC State. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, Nebraska, under seven and a half in their three wins. We're hanging around with that one because that's the money we're going to use, fans, for bowls. So that's my bowl budget. Uh, uh, Notre Dame over eight and a half. They have to go undefeated the rest of the season. Yeah, We've already ahead. gone through that. Penn State mm. over eight and a half. They're at six wins. I need three more wins. And Mike says that Penn State yeah. Maryland game gonna be something, boy. Yes, yeah, for me and all the wrong reasons. Okay. Texas yeah. under eight and a half. They got five wins. That means they have to win four more. Um, that's going to be close. Texas A&M is under eight and a half, and they're at three wins. I think I feel kind of safe. I think I do. Um, you do? I think I feel safe because I don't see where they're going to win five in a row. Shit, so, they uh, lost yesterday. Yes. <laughs> South Carolina, Mike, six and a half, and they got five wins. They only need two more. <laughs> is this the tease where – I start looking at South Carolina games, and they start losing. It's going to be the uh, last two weeks of the year because, uh, you know, that last game is uh, against Georgia. So, we you know, no, I was, what was the last game? So, no, Clemson. Clemson's the last game. Maybe South Carolina can get the upset. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Anyway, Utah over nine. Eh. Clemson is over ten and a half, and they're at eight wins. You'll get that. You're going to get that. You got that. And Ohio State's at seven, and they're supposed to be over 11. I think I got that, man. That so, was easy. The week nine games to watch, not a good week, I don't think, Mike. So I'm going to give you these games, and you might not be that interested in it. Ohio State, Penn State, they're going to hype that all week. And I don't know, you know, you, you got to get ratings or whatever, but I don't even. He Michigan, said they're going to hype that all week. If Michigan beat them up and their offense is nothing, what's Ohio State going to do? But Ohio State's traveling to Penn State. They're going hmm. there. Beaver Stadium, 100,000. Maybe it'd be one of those whiteout games. I don't know. But I still think Ohio State's going to win. Yeah, they try to save that whiteout game for like that. But, yeah, Ohio State got that joint. Yeah. So here's the one I'm really nervous about because I, I kind of like watching TCU. They're going to Morgantown. Strange things happen in Morgantown. Yeah, that's where, my, that's where my son got spit on. Yeah, spat, that's on. That's spat on. Spat on. Uh, do you think TCU comes out with the W or one of them strange Morgantown games where West Virginia just plays no. on all cylinders? TCU is safe. Okay. Notre Dame versus Syracuse. Syracuse is coming off a loss, and Notre Dame is quite frankly not playing as well as they probably should have. Syracuse, Syracuse gets the win. Yeah, Syracuse gets the win. Okay, the what's it called? The world largest cocktail party, Florida and Georgia. Mm, man, I need to be it. I, I, that's on my bucket list. In Jacksonville? That's on my bucket list. Um, but uh, can Florida beat Georgia? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kentucky, Tennessee, I want to watch that game to see if Stoops, Mark Stoops can get a win. Um, because he's a good coach. Mike's told you the last couple of years, folks, on the show that Kentucky is nobody slouch in football anymore. Mm -mm. But Tennessee They're not that has game a you chance circle. to to be that team this year. And if they win that, the following game is Georgia. So do they look ahead and get caught? Curious to see what the spread is on that game. Uh, so anyway. Tennessee then, wins. Tennessee wins. <laughs> That's all that analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tennessee wins. Give it to me. And finally, Ole Miss against Texas A&M. 
Ole Miss is coming off a bad loss. Texas A&M is coming through a bad season. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, So any game, catch your eye next week, sir, because it's not the strongest week, but there are a couple. Uh, I, I, the world launched cocktail parties <laughs> like just for the for everything that surrounds the game. Yes, <laughs> I, oh, it's on my bucket list. That's one of my my bucket list games. That and then Alabama and Auburn, like those two. I I definitely want Iron to tail- Bowl game. Yeah, yes. I want to tailgate and go to those. Those are two college football games that I want to go to at, at some point in my it's life. I, you know. All right, so uh, on behalf of my tag team partner, Coach Mike Francis, I am Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the I Coaches podcast, and we'll see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. And Nick, come on, man. He was scared. We're out of here. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed today's show. The I Coaches podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.